on this episode of my last two brain cells. When Madison was in her hustle era, she could not go on vacations. Physically. And it was terrible. I couldn't take a weekend off because to go camping. Because I love vacations. I love them so Elliot much. Elliot is a bougie boy. I'm a bougie boy and I want to go I want to go to the Caribbean. Hello. Everybody. And welcome to my last two brain cells. I'm your host. Madison. Morris. And I'm your host. <laughs> Elliot. Morris. And we are best friends. And what? And also, we are lovers. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Welcome to the world's stupidest intro, you guys. Well, welcome to the world's stupidest podcast <laughs> with that- your two stupid friends. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about stupid okay listen you guys we just filmed a whole episode so we're kind of delirious um today i wanted to talk to you about something very important and not stupid at all we you we you we we i wanted to discuss have a little discussion about how i survived my hustle era and how you can survive it too and, truly and, and escape it what was my hustle era hustle era you ask was it a month great long? great question was it two months long M- perhaps six months long was it six years long was it it was it was it was what no five it was five from years? i would say 2017 through 2022 was the thick of my hustle era yeah 2022 does count because you did have that one like 17 training month yeah and i did have that commercial build out and all the other months were like eight trainings and i like traveled twice a month to teach out of state yeah yeah that was a lot yeah a lot listen you guys i think as lash artists it is so hard to build your business that once you finally do and you're like feeling that first hit of success it's addictive it's addicting and it's like every booking is a hit every single time someone swipes their card rebooks with you posts a picture like it's all just like these little dopamine hits and you're like i'm a superhero like i just want to do more 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 and volume becomes your biggest concern and so i um love my job so much and i love lashes so much and i love people so much and the career that I built doing lash extensions genuinely became my favorite thing in the world that nothing else even mattered anymore. And then it became what I would call my hustle era. And now we all go through phases in our business and our life where we're busier than we maybe want to be or should be. Mm -hmm. And when I first got fully booked on my own, like I had left my job at the salon and I was always fully booked at the salon. But when I left and went on my own and my books built and uh, people were just obsessed with my work. I felt like a superhero and I felt like I never wanted to let anyone down and I'm quite a people pleaser and um, not anymore. I got boundaries for days, but back in the day, I was very much a people pleaser and I wanted everyone to have such a good image of me and I wanted to make all my clients 100% happy all the time and that meant bending over backwards constantly. So I entered a very long, dark, long, dark winter that I would call my, call my hustle era and What did this era look like exactly? Maybe you're in one right now. And um, what it looked like for me was number one, I was addicted to bang energy drinks. And I would. So that's the first sign. If you're addicted to bang energy drinks, you might be in your hustle era. era. I would wake up at like 730 in the morning. I would like barely even get ready. I wouldn't even throw myself together. I didn't even have time to get my own lashes done. This was back when you were wearing falsies. Oh, yeah. I didn't even have time to like get my own eyelash extensions done for, you know, four hours a month. Um, so I would like drink a bang energy. I would show up to work and I would lash people with no breaks back to back. I'm talking like no bathroom breaks. Like if I needed to go to the bathroom, it had to be mid client as fast as humanly possible. She would eat her food throughout the day when she went to the bathroom. I would literally have like a can of mixed nuts and I would like have an She'd almond just... on the toilet and then like wash my hands and be like, okay, back to work. Like I was a squirrel. Um, so that was not healthy. It was not good for my back and my hands and, you know, all the oh, other... Her, hand, her fingers started to get, like, numb. Yeah, I was getting, was like, bad. like really bad numbness in my hands. And I was probably just so malnourished. She <laughs> just, was like, malnourished. never saw sunlight, never had a social life. But, um, you know, that was a time in my life. Yeah, because this was also, I mean, half of this time was in the winter in Alaska where yeah. the sun comes up at, like, 
11 a.m. and it goes down at like 3 p.m. Um, and so it's just she's going to work and leaving work in the dark. Yeah. And I it all was very well intentioned. Like I just wanted to be there for everyone that needed me. And, and I, I understand as someone that loves lashes um, and loves beauty and their beauty routine is like something so special to them. I understand like how important it is to have a service provider that's reliable and gets you in and does great work. And like, I wanted to be that for everyone, but I didn't realize that I only needed like 25 clients at my price point to be fully booked. Whereas I was accommodating like 60, you know? And so I was just crazy burning, burning myself out. And I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, what my game plan was for longevity in my career and also how I exited my hustle era. Because although I am a very busy woman now and I wear a lot of hats, I don't have that life anymore. And now most days of the week, I kind of wake up when my body wakes up and I have like a couple things planned throughout the day. I'm a lot more intentional with my time. I have a social life. I'm able to travel. I have time with my loved ones and my husband and... um. And I am still able to accommodate now a clientele of around eight. And I... Is I, it eight? I have I eight. Was six. I have eight clients. You have eight? Mm-hmm. Wow. I have eight clients. I, I, I aim to do like four model sets a month on top of that for courses and content. I'm able to actually spend time creating, you know, things that help so many people. And I'm able to film this podcast, you know, that is able to help so many people and... Uh, like I've created a life for myself off of that because that was originally like how I saved up a lot of money to like do things like have a salon suites and all that stuff. So I'm grateful for my hustle era, but I needed to sit down and create a game plan for longevity. And I think it's so important as lash artists to see the long, see the long term, see the long game, play the long game and figure out like, okay, how can I create a sustainable business that is, you know, like something I'm passionate about. If it's doing lashes, how can I do lashes forever without like hating it or hurting my body? And if it is another avenue, like, okay, how can I build a business maybe that isn't focused around me as a service provider, but it explores different avenues. So there's a few things Elliot and I did. And I was about, I would say like 22 years old when Elliot and I truly were like things need to change and we need to create because I love lashes and I love people and I love the business I built. How can I do something with this business that can actually like build a life for ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause up until this point, Madison was taking like as many clients as possible and, uh, trying to do as many sets as she could, as many fills as she could to make money so that she could add it to her pile and she could sit on top of it like a dragon she had no she had no like goals for the money she just loved watching she was addicted to watching the number go up i was like mr krabs when she really was dove into the money yeah no she literally because she had no plans with it i was like where do you want to go she's like what do you mean where do i want to go i do the lashes and then the number in my bank account goes up and then i come home and, and then, then i do the lashes and then i never spend the money in my bank account and the only money i ever spend is my cash tips <laughs> so the number in my bank account never goes down and which I, was- I still i still pay my taxes on but i would just spend them i want to say one funny thing is when we were first like uh like i was on tiktok the other day and i i see those videos where it's like how much i made in a day is a lash tech or how much i made in a day is a lash artist and Mm -hmm. i'm like rookie numbers i could take 12 clients you know like pump those up yeah back in because if i made a video like that back in the day people would be like girl you are gonna hurt yourself like i would take as many clients as humanly possible yeah um and i kind of saw my life as like and a lot of people ask me how i got through those days and truly i would see it as a video game like i would wake up in the morning and i was like the main character lash artist Yeah, one thing you don't know about madison she's a gamer yeah i would like see my life as a video game and one thing i told elliot about today is when i had a day of like 11 clients or 12 clients i would take 12 clients one every hour on the hour and just lash a 12 hour day like piece of cake i would drive through starbucks you know first thing in the morning on my way and i would get like 12 cake pops and I would have them in my lash cart. And for every single client for days like this, I would give each of them a cake pop at the end of their service. And I'd be like, love you so much, girl. Let's rebook. And it just kind of was like a little game to me. Like it always was the end of every appointment was like, ding, ding, ding. You got another star. Like it was just so fun. I felt like doing lashes for people well it quickly was like 
I felt like a superhero. It felt it like a game to me. As good as it gets. It was as good as it, it got for me. So our game plan was number one, I realized rather than doing high volume, low prices, I needed to do low volume, high prices. That was step one. Step one. Step one to escaping the hustle matrix. Yeah. And here's the thing too, also, we aren't anti-hustle like, but I, I wouldn't say we're pro hustle. We work very hard, but we work very smart now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I feel like hustle, like it's a bad rep. Uh, well, I feel like the connotation with hustle is that you're like doing whatever it takes to get ahead. It's like, you're not at all, you're like, working, but it's like, I think I prefer to work like smart and like, yeah, you do what like you need to do, but you work in service of like a goal that you have. Yeah. And just know that like. I think if you are in that stage right now, like have an idea of what you're building and why and have a why behind it. Cause yeah. if it's just to make money, you're going to burn out way faster than I did. Yeah. I liked making money, but it wasn't my, just my end goal. Like my end goal was really to just make everyone feel great. And yeah. Yeah. The money was like a side quest Totally. where she did like watching the number go up. But I think the real reason, like looking at it from the outside, I think the real reason money was not my number one. It was not. All. It, was it was like was my 10th driver. Yeah. It was like the real reason was because she loved like making her clients feel pretty. Yeah. That was like really and like special. That was it. And that's why she took so many clients too. It's like she, she just wanted to make as many women feel special as she possibly could and make like as many people's day because she was just like, they love it when they come in. Who am I to say they can't come in? I'll just stay till 8 p.m. I love them. I they, love I love my girlies. They would be so sad if I didn't stay come till eight PM. Come on, come come here, yeah. my girlies. Yeah. Um. So yeah, number one, first thing to do is is and that required for me to do a lower volume of clients and charge more and like make the same amount if not more is I had to specialize and I had to set myself apart. And so by specializing and by kind of offering one style of lashes that is your signature style that you are an expert in and you are like better than anyone in your area at, um, it allows you to not just be taking like everyone who wants any style. You're actively saying like, I am a specialist at this particular style. I can do it better than anyone. And because of that, um, you know, my rates for that reflect that it, I charge more for that. I'm a, set yourself apart as a luxury service provider. You're, Obviously this takes time. Yeah. You're going to be much better off spending all your time focusing on getting really good at one thing than focusing all your time on getting okay at a bunch of things. And the reason, and, and most people get okay at a bunch of things because one, it's easier to get okay at things than it is to get really good at things. Oh yeah. Even if you're getting okay at a bunch of things. But the other thing is too, is it's scarier to specialize because like a lot of people feel, and it's a very natural thing to feel that like, oh, if I only do one thing, then I will only attract like a certain type of clientele and I'm like limiting my options for the future. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that is, it's, it's understandable why people would feel that way because it, it makes sense. When you think about it, it's like, oh, well, I only would attract clients who want this sort of thing. But the thing is, like, there's enough clients out there that want every specific thing that, like, if you specialize in something and get really good and you're the best at that thing and then people seek you out for that thing, you're going to be much better off. Yeah. Absolutely. I had a student in a class um, recently and she was a very new lash artist. Like, she was transitioning from being a full-time hairstylist. So she had her cosmetology license and she went online and took my mini angel set styling workshop, <sighs> which is, like, it, I love this. It's like 199 bucks. I love she this took girl. it. She practiced. She took models and she built an entire clientele doing only angel sets. She has no, she's never touched a classic lash in her life. She doesn't do hybrid volume, mega, anything like that. And she has a full clientele doing she, only angel sets. I was like, how many and this, clients the angel do you set take? She was like, I, I can't turn people away fast enough. Like I am taking like five clients a day doing only angel sets. I only know how to do closed fans and apply them on people. Can that you is, believe that? Can you believe that? And the angel sets, the angel set course came out what? Like four or five months ago. It came out in January. It came out in January. So yeah, six months ago, it's been out for six months. And this girl built an entire clientele off of just that. Because people wanted it. And she, mar and she marketed herself as Let's I'm the angel go. lash girl. And she marketed herself by being like, okay, and the other thing too with angel lashes, the, one of the other reasons I think that's so smart is because no one else had time to like get better at it. It's like she started right at the beginning and she's like, oh, I'm just going to specialize at this. And she can easily say, oh yeah, I'm the best at this because I've been doing it since they came out. 
I love this too. She goes, I, I'm in a salon with like six other lash artists and all of them do like hybrid volume, classic Megan. They're always building their clientele, but she started six months ago only doing angel sets and she's fully booked. So it works. It works. I know it's scary, but just specialize in a thing. Find what you enjoy. Maybe specialize and- in angel sets. Who knows? It, it works clearly. Yeah. There's clients out there. The girlies love angel sets. <laughs> they really do. The gals love them. The gals love them. The girls love them. If you can do them well, you, oh. you can, you know. And she even told me, she goes, and in the beginning, I thought that I had to charge like way less for these because they're not super mega. But she realized going f- like moving on that she can actually charge more for them because she is the specialist in this style. People pay for what they want. People, People do. aren't going to be like, oh, I'll pay more for this because it's more lashes. No, yeah. they pay more for it for things that are more like what they want. A million percent. Um, the other thing that we did, and this is a little more extreme, but sometimes you got to, sometimes in our life, we have to take risk. We have to do the thing that we don't know the result of, but there's a chance that it could work out. And for me, I looked at um, you know, my business and how big I wanted to actually grow it beyond me service providing. And the area that I was living in couldn't accommodate the, the dreams that I had. I was just such a dreamer. Um, but like we wanted to start the studios we wanted and to start studios. we looked at real estate in Alaska and Anchorage was not a good place for us to start the studios. And so like we, I, I do believe that like your location for like doing lashes specifically does not limit like what you're able to do with lashes unless you're in a very tiny town but where I mean, it's if, like 200 people. But if you want to get you know? into like real estate, like but, yeah, salon suites, stuff if, like that. Like, if you're growing your business to where like you need to hire employees or you're you're trying to do something like salon suites. Yeah. like Sometimes then, you have to take a calculated risk. Yeah. Because like. Like if if you look at companies like companies that grew a ton, like you look at Amazon, like Amazon started in Seattle because Microsoft was in Seattle and oh, yeah. they were like, oh, this gives us a really good pool of talent to recruit from by starting in Seattle. So they use that as like a smart strategic move. And so like for us, we looked at Scottsdale and we were like, oh, Scottsdale's a place with high well, real estate. Well, we actually looked at a lot of states to move oh, to. Oh, yeah, well, that's why we chose Scottsdale is what I'm saying. is like, yeah, we looked at a bunch of places. We looked at Florida. Mm-hmm. The reason we didn't move to Florida is because one, it's much easier to become an esthetician there. And so there's a yeah, lot at, more. Yeah, at the time, they like, I think it, you barely needed like a couple hundred hours to be like a lash technician. Yeah. So the average prices in Florida were much lower, mm-hmm. which meant it would be harder for you to charge really ultra premium prices because it does affect it. Like you could have been one of the highest priced in Florida, yeah. but you probably would not have been able to charge as much as you can charge in yeah. Scottsdale. So we, people just go to Scottsdale for this sort of thing. Yeah. So we looked at where there would be like a very high concentration of beauty professionals, a high concentration of lash artists, um, where people wanted to like go on a vacation and take a lash training kind of thing. And obviously that was very hard because the safe thing would be to open up a salon suites like I wanted in Anchorage, Alaska. Like that would be the safest thing to oh, do. Yeah. And, and, and we could have done it and it could have been mildly successful. Yeah. And we could have, you know, built something. It would have made money. We would have been fine. Oh yeah. I had lash artist friends in Anchorage. Like I would have been, I would have been oh, fine. Yeah. But we have bigger dreams than that. We did. And it was so much harder, but I think just... And also, you guys, I just hated Alaska. Yeah. I hated it so but, much. I mean, I'm so glad we did. And I, and I look back and I am so grateful for those. Because the first year we moved here, honestly, even if I let on that I was fine, it was hard. It was hard the first year oh, I yeah. lived here. Like, we had no family here. We didn't we have... We didn't know anyone here. No. We knew, like, one person here yeah. when we moved. And so sometimes you have to if i mean if you have that savings you have that that little business built sometimes you have to take that risk yeah absolutely and i would encourage you i mean if you're willing to do the hard work and start from scratch it's worth it oh yeah if you're a place and you feel like like if you're a lash artist and you're like you feel like you are starting to get limited by your location i think it starts to happen where your location limits you once you get to like the ultra premium level so like you could charge what like 200 something dollars for a full set anywhere right like honestly yes you could charge 200 something dollars for a full set anywhere you couldn't charge 400 dollars from for a full set anywhere no right like when we say that your location does not impact like really 
your ability to be successful as a lash artist, you can be a successful lash artist basically anywhere. Yeah. And you can get to the point where you're charging like $200 for a full set. You're doing like over $100 for a fill. You can do that anywhere. But once you get to the point where you're like, I want to be like one of the best in the US, or I want to build a company that's bigger than lashes, or I want to start getting into like real estate or something, there's a lot of ways where like, you can start a salon suites in like a small town, like small towns need salon suites. Like Definitely, estheticians, yeah. hairstylists in small towns, they need a place Every, to work out of. Everyone needs a safe, you can absolutely place do it. to work out of. Absolutely. And so you can absolutely do that basically anywhere. Guys, if you tomorrow, I'm not even kidding. This is how much I love Lightheart. If you legitimately gave me unlimited resources and money and funding and everything tomorrow, and I just woke up and like won the lottery, I would open a Lightheart in every single state in every single town for every single service so provider sick. and i It'd would so have like people that ran them and i would make them as like rentable and accessible as humanly possible that would be what i what i oh do. yeah for sure and then i would like obviously there's people starving and i would like help them but first things first uh -huh. there would be first like, First, first things, things first, first, we're going to help the estheticians. Uh, first things first. Then we help the starving children. You know what will heal the world? More lash artists in, in so true. Light Hearts Salon Suites. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that really helped me set me up for longevity in my career is if you're a lash artist and you love your job, but it's just, it's honestly just such a hard job to have long term, is I would find what you love about the job and then figure out a way to do that more. And so for me, I really loved the creative aspect of lashing. Like I actually loved when I'm able to sit down with uh, a model just completely unpaid and uh, create something sometimes freestyle, sometimes very, very planned out. And I'm able to like do a photo shoot and take pictures and do the makeup and the hair and like turn on my music. Like that is what I actually enjoy about this career so much is the craft of it and being creative. And, um, I needed a little bit of free time to do that. And so having higher prices and, you know, diversifying my income and giving myself a little extra free time, I'm able to actually do that. And that is what's kept, that's what's kept me in love with physically lashing is being able to lash for no money, completely unpaid, no time restrictions, completely for the love of it. And that is what's kept me in love with the craft. Yeah, I think a really good way to like kind of fight off burn off burnout and, and help like move into the next stage of your career, wherever you're going. Is diversifying? Well, I, th I think a really good like practical thing people could do is like take a few hours each week that aren't just time you have off, yes, 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 but yes. it's not time you're taking clients mm -hmm. and it's time where you work on something in your business to actually propel it forward, move it forward. And like, whether that's uh, learning a new skill or just practicing, or maybe it is taking a model set where you can go crazy and like try something that you just like was in your head. You want to see how it worked. Like you have no idea if it's actually going to work or not. Like, Stuff like that is so valuable. You have to schedule the time. You have off. to schedule the time because it, you won't just do it naturally. Like we have to schedule time. Like, okay, this is when we're going to do a model set. This is when we're going to do like branding work. This is when we're going to do that. Because if you just are like, oh, well, it'll happen when it happens. It's never going to happen. And you're just going to keep taking clients. You're going to fill all of your time with clients. Because if you don't have something filling a time slot and then you have a new client, who comes to you and they're like, hey, can you fit me in? Then you see that free time slot and you're like, oh, I'll squeeze you in there. And then before you know it, know it all your time's gone. Mm -hmm. So block out time for you to do what you want to do in your business because that yeah. makes it so much easier to do it for a long time. And this is my final um, point I want to make is it can feel very much like you're strapped to your lash bed, like you physically can't leave. But in order to have a life outside the bed and transition into other things. Um, I know that it's hard to know that your clients are taken care of when you're not there, but build relationships with other lash artists in your area, genuine relationships with other lash artists in your area where the few of you can have a life and go on vacation and have a baby and get married and, and go on a vacation with your friends. And you know that your clients are taken care of by other people that can accommodate them and they'll come back and see you. That's a very unique relationship to have, but it's worth it to build those. Yeah. Cause when Madison was in her hustle era, she could not go on vacations physically. And it was terrible. I couldn't take a weekend off because and go camping. I love vacations. I love them so much. Elliot is a bougie boy. I'm a bougie boy. And I want to go, I want to go to the Caribbean, <laughs> but we couldn't because Madison was like, Oh, well I have clients. Madison that week. can't even go to dinner at night. I'm like, okay, what about nine and a half? 
half months from now from uh, Friday to Sunday. And she's like, it can't. I have four clients those days. <laughs> Ellie, it's like, I'm like, no, you don't. I'm like, what? I will, though. I will, though. Mentally, <laughs> like, I, I just do. I can't take the time off. Yeah. Make sure that you have relationships yeah. with people where you can rely on them. I mean, especially if you get sick. Oh, if I you mean, get there sick. are so many times where I hate to admit this, but there are so many times where I would be lashing where I just felt Madison. horrible because I mean, I was you were a super spreader no i no, but like there were times where i had food poisoning but i showed up for my clients yeah, and i would did. just pretend like i was fine even though my hands were like shaking yeah. you know and and it, it's awful but you you feel a responsibility like if you don't do their lashes they're gonna have janky Who lashes will? and they're gonna see someone else and they're gonna talk badly about your work because and your career you don't over. you don't trust any of the other artists in the and area the to end. back you up like yeah, and so it's so good to build that honest, genuine rapport with other artists and so and be able to have that freedom. So yeah, to wrap up, number one. What is number one? Guys, <laughs> starving. You guys, I'm so hungry too. I'm starving. Maybe, maybe can we like? What are we getting for can lunch? We like DoorDash something. Yeah, can we actually? Yeah, we can. Elliot never lets us DoorDash. I don't. I don't because I just I think it I think it's so wasteful you guys I feel like DoorDash it's like you buy something it's like $15 and then they're like okay that'll be 45 bucks I'm just like what where did all that come that'll from that'll be 900 dollars I just I just hate it I, yeah. and then you have to tip because like you can't not tip because that's so mean you can't you can't you have to and tip. so then it's like it's you paid 50 bucks for lunch and then I'm, I don't know it doesn't <laughs> I, feel good I but have to, it's but a it's a work meal it's a work meal. Ooh, it's a write off. Yeah, it's a write off because I'm ordering it while we're doing the podcast. <gasps> so it's we have we have physical proof. So IRS, if you're watching this, this one's this work one's meal. For the we're job. very hungry because we're working. Because we're working so hard, Mr. IRS. Please don't audit me. Okay. Please, I'm so scared. Love you guys so very much. Um, if you guys have any episode ideas for us that you would love to hear, please drop them below in the comments. Leave a comment. Please. We're, we're running out of ideas. If we need them. If you're on YouTube, please drop a comment. I love reading them. Oh, no, we do. Every time, because we get a little ding on our phone every time someone leaves yeah. a comment and then we're like, ooh, new friend. New, new friend. friend unlocked. <laughs> okay. Um, we love you guys. Love you guys so much. If you're watching this and you watch it all the way to, all the, way to the end, then... You get a special prize. You get a special prize. And that prize is... Bye. A smooch just for you. Bye.